They say that Alessandro della Spina may well have started it all. Snell was so certain of his calculations, he called his thoughts a law. Newton gave us white light as appearing as a rainbow. We all know that Fresnel was a whiz with lenses in a row. Prentice knew his prism pretty well, while Abbey knew his value, we can tell. We know that Franklin made an executive decision when the bifocal he did create. Now here's another optical gem I think you'll find quite great. It's the Seeger's rule of the optical business. And it even pertains to this week's topic, thickness. The rule, my dear friend, it goes like this. When dealing with optics, you always give up something to get something. And that ends our poetry reading for today. What do I mean by that? Particularly when I'm talking about lenses to fill higher prescriptions. Let's just say minus five and up, plus three and up. Everything you do is a compromise. If you want the thinnest lens possible, maybe you'll choose a high index lens, but then you might suffer for some weight. You may suffer from some chromatic aberration. Let's say you want the lightest lens. Maybe you'll choose poly and your optics won't be so good. Let's say you want the greatest optics possible. You might choose glass, suffer the weight, the danger of wearing glass. Everything is a trade-off. But what I'm here to talk about today are some things that you can do kind of before the sale, kind of during the sale, and then when you're working with your lab in order to make your life easier, get a much better quality lens, and of course, ultimately make your customer that much happier with their pair of glasses. I wrote stuff up there just so I could say more stuff. If I were to take all of this information, everything that you need to know, everything you need to think about when dealing with higher power lenses, it boils down to the golden rule, not even millimeters matter, tenths of a millimeter matter. Super, super important. We are going to talk about the high prescription wheel of terror. Yeah, okay, I just made that up. Decentration. Any decentration of the lens leads to issues with cutout. Cutout means that we're going to increase the size of the lens, which leads to thickness. The never ending cycle. The high prescription wheel of terror. Related to that, we'll talk about how blank size and thickness are related to each other. We are going to talk about small is good and simple is good. And if you look closely, you can actually read between the lines where it says fashion be damned. I don't care if the girl on the front cover of the eye magazine has glasses that are this big. That's horrible, okay? Small is good, simple is good. We'll talk about that. We will talk about cribbing. <laughs> No, not a horse cribbing. It's something different. We'll, we'll, I'll show you. And we are not going to be talking about Taylor Swift, so we are not going to shake, 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 shake. Instead, we're going to be talking about Janet Benjamin and her need for the shape, 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 shape. And then we will talk a little bit about working with the lab so that you get the very best high prescription lenses possible. Let's start with the high prescription wheel of terror. Don't you dare touch me! Stand up! No! No! What do I mean when I talk about decentration? You should know this already, and there's tons of this stuff on the website, so if you're not sure, look at it. But Here's a drawing to illustrate it. If my frame PD and my patient PD do not match, eventually as I move that lens over to allow for decentration, I'm gonna end up with a gap between the lens and the eye wire. 
Obviously, that is not okay. It doesn't matter if it is plus or if it's a minus. If I have a large eye wire and a narrow PD, eventually I'm gonna run out of lens to fill the eye wire opening. So you can see how decentration leads to cutout problems. Cutout problems mean that we have to increase the size of the blank that we're going to cut down to fit the eye wire. Anytime that we have decentration, we have cutout, we have thickness issues. And here's why. You can see all of these lenses are the same. They're all plus three. They all have roughly the same curves on the back and on the front. As I increase the blank size necessary to cut out for that eye wire, that blank is going to become thicker. Remember I said tenths of a millimeter matter here. If you don't take anything else away from this video, I want you to always remember every customer you look at, keep this in the back of your mind, the larger the eye wire, the bigger the lens blank you're going to need to cut out to fill that prescription, and the thicker that lens will be. This isn't a one-dimensional pretty drawing. This is the way it is. Increase that blank size, you're going to get a thicker lens. Thicker lens, never a good thing. Now let's take that a step further and look at that lens within the eye wire opening. If my brown lines are my frame and my frame PD and my patient PD are the same, at least I'll have the same thickness on each side. But when I begin to decenter the lens, look what happens. On a minus lens, I get a thick edge temporally and a slightly thinner edge nasally. In a plus, I get a thick edge nasally and a slightly thinner edge temporally. All right, I know you're now you're saying, hey, you're just telling me problems, problems, give me some solutions. So let's talk about how you make your life a little bit better when dealing with those higher plus and minus prescriptions. One of the most important things that you can do during the sale when you're helping your customer pick out a pair of glasses is to try to get your frame PD as close to your patient PD as possible. Of course, I know that's not always possible and it's gonna very rarely be perfect, but remember, those tenths of a millimeter matter. If your patient's right on the edge, they got that 49 and the 47, go with the 47 when their script is high. I don't care if there's a little touch or it's not textbook perfect. If you have a high script, smaller is better. Keep that frame PD, patient PD as close as possible. And you're gonna get a much better lens as a result. What does that look like? It looks like these three drawings. This is what you're after. You want a frame PD that is equal or close to your patient PD. Notice how nicely centered their eyes are. Here, frame PD is too wide. Eyes are way, way in close and tight. You're gonna have a whole lot of edge thickness out towards the temporal end of that frame. Here we have a frame PD that's too narrow. Frame is in, eyes are out. You're gonna have thickness issues in the nasal area. So always strive for that perfect balance of frame PD, patient PD, being as close as possible. I just touched on this. These two are, of course, very closely related. But the other thing you're gonna to want to do is always choose, again, that smallest eye wire. And here's why. You can see why small is good. Look at the drawing. You have a blue frame, a brown frame, and a red frame to choose from. Let's say those frame sizes are only one millimeter difference in size. That's half a millimeter on each side of the lens, each side of the frame. Even that half a millimeter is going to make a difference in that finished edge thickness. Cribbing is a, it, it means to chew. And with modern surfacing equipment, if you provide us with all the information that we need that I'm about to show you, we can crib the lens. It means we can chew away material around the outside so it is roughly the shape of the frame that you're going to put them in. It has a whole lot of advantages, greatly reduces wear and tear on equipment, particularly your edger, obviously, reduces the chance of lens spin on the block, reduces the chance of warping the lens from heat generated in the process of edging, and obviously just overall reduces finishing time. All right, let's talk about our shape, which is related to our comment that simple is good. Let's take a look at this drawing. Sharp corners, unique shapes, straight edges, try to avoid them. As you see, as I move my lens blanks, which are always going to be either a round or an oval shape, 
choosing a frame that is not a round or an oval is greatly going to increase the chance that you're going to have cutout problems. You saw that first oval or round lens over a round frame, how much I could move it over before I got the gap. Well, if you look at something with sharp corners, squares, odd shapes, it takes very little movement to start creating that gap. The gap means that I'm gonna have cutout problems. Cutout problems mean I have to increase my blank size. Increasing my blank size means I'm gonna have additional thickness, which of course is not what you're after. That is why we're asking you to give us the shape. Remember that tenths of a millimeter matter when we're working with higher prescriptions. Remember, of course, it's never perfect, but try your best to match your frame PD and your customer PD. Always choose the smallest size and shape that will work for your customer's needs. Remember that with enough information, we can crib the lens. We talked about all the advantages that that provides you. And you're always going to keep in mind that simple shapes are good shapes. Now it is time to call Laramie K and actually place a lens order. I'm gonna show you how to send us the shape and I'm gonna show you how to get a good ruler red boxing measurement. Remember, if you give us all of this and this, we are going to specifically design a freeform lens that is specific to that frame, to that prescription, and to that customer. And you're gonna get a better quality product. No question about it. Here are two quick videos to remind you how to send us the shape and how to read the boxing measurements. And I think we've had enough for today. Let's wrap it up. I will see you again next week. Thanks.